Hello, welcome to the end of week nine, can you believe? Wow, it's episode eight. Um, I hope you've been well, I'm sure you have been. Uh, we've all been well here. We've got some rather good news and some rather bad news. I don't know which to share first. We'll probably well, get the bad news out of the way. Now, I'm sure you've seen in the news and your parents have probably had letters and things like that and we'll talk a little bit more about this later but we are aiming to go back to school after the half term holidays so with that in mind because this program takes such a lot of time to make next week will be the last episode of St Beads TV unless things change of course but uh, we're, we're on schedule to make our ninth episode the last one so it's really really important if you want to be in that program send your clips send your videos uh, let's make it the biggest and the best one yet but it is coming to an end uh, I guess all good things do <laughs> um, on a lighter note some happier news we have a new member of staff starting I'll give you a little clue all he had to do to get the job was to pop the black is back mr beaumont is coming back can you believe he's finished all his teacher training he's finished with his university work and he has applied for a job and the first job he applied for he has been successful he is coming home he's coming back to st beads and it wasn't just a case of potting the ball that was from ages ago that's from last year when we were allowed to go into the pub um now he went through a lengthy process with other candidates and they were tested and they were questioned and they had to demonstrate various skills. And on the day Mr. Bowman came through and he will be starting in September and he will probably go into key stage two. Uh, so if you're going to be year four, five, six, something like that, you might have yourself uh, a lovely new teacher. We're very excited at the prospect of having Mr. Bowman back. Um, it will just add to the unity and the family here at St. Beads. And uh, speaking of which, in this penultimate show, shall we have a look at your pictures? Now Miss Parkin from Class 2 has sent us uh, these great pictures. Here we've got Paul Gara. She's been out in the garden doing lots of written work beautiful art that really is a high standard and it looks like the garden's been decorated for ve day as well and then emily's been doing some work on her historical female figures and callum looks to be very happy with his work i'm not quite sure is he doing some energy saving ideas for keeping the house warm good to see you both now millie fullwood has had just totally had enough of this lockdown so she decided to uh, pack a bag do her hair get everything ready and she was going to go on a little holiday as you can see here she's taken the doll with her she got the shades and she just completely had enough she even did the ironing got all that ready and as one of our old friends blake it looks like he intervened and talked her out of taking this unscheduled break and then tamara and nathan have been making the most of the good weather doing a spot of baking and then they're uh, they've been dressing up like their heroes in the nhs as well as doing a little bit of artwork alana's been making some uh, wonderful breakfast food and it's fun and games in the Rhodes household they've generally been reading making and uh, working and then they had a little uh, indoor camping session that looks like great fun and then mrs hart sent us these from class four you see Max been learning all about how to tell the time. Ola's been storyboarding and uh, and cooking by the looks of it. Poppy's been doing her writing and Abby looks to be on with his coding still. I think he'll come back from this uh, lockdown an expert in coding. He already was, to be fair. And a good range of activities in the Finney household. And nice to see them celebrating the VE Day celebrations as well. Now, it was my pleasure to bump into Thomas on his walk the other day such a polite young man he really is probably the most polite young man i've ever met 
uh, and here he is with a photo wall of all his activities that he's been getting up to out and about on his bike baking looks been experimenting in the bath planting seeds very very active young man and then we got a superb uh, collage summary for matilda who's been very active throughout the week and making most of the good weather midweek and she shares a slide with ella who's been um working very hard doing her biology and her science as well as some reading and getting 10 out of 10 on her spellings which was really really good and then a little later in the week we got another one for Matilda who uh, really did want to make the most of the good weather on Wednesday in the paddling pool and Scarlett started to show some of the work she'd been doing but did take a break to go on the uh, trampoline but I think she's most proud this week of the baking that she did her literacy work and very importantly she's been learning all about how to tell the time and she's become expert at that. That's really good to see. Uh, we also want to thank Mrs. Kane, who sent us these wonderful photos. Here we can see Olivia, who was inspired by our Mr. Freeman earlier on in the week to do her 10K. Nico did a five finger prayer and Betty was been uh, practicing her French. There's another little glimpse inside the Finney household. Finn has been uh, out and about, outdoor learning, doing all about forces. Mrs McLaughlin will be pleased and of course he is always forced to hear his mum sing constantly which would be a pleasure I'm sure Finn. And then Ethan has been learning all about uh, science with uh, area and perimeter in maths and then doing work on the Pentecost. Nice to see that RE is still high on your priorities there Ethan. Very well done sir. Now Mr Freeman I know has inspired so many of you to uh, get out and about and do your bit for the 10k. Uh, the event couldn't take place this year, but it hasn't stopped so many of you going out and raising money. Um, big thumbs up and a big huge well done to Mr. Freeman, who did run his 100 kilometers, uh, did 10k every day for 10 days, and um, he finally got to the end. A huge sense of relief. I'm sure he could auction that grey sweatshirt off. It would probably be able to walk on its own accord to the new owner. Uh, Mr Freeman has done remarkably well. He's blitzed his fundraising target, uh, but it is still open, I believe. So if you are able, with the help of your parents, to make a small donation, I will put a link on after this, and hopefully you can... Uh, send a penny or two to acknowledge the efforts for the fundraising work that Mr Freeman has done. And finally we got another window full of uh, pictures of Anya. The usual busy slide of uh, outdoor activities, a bit of baking, Jenga even there, uh, and lots of time for writing, getting inspiration from YouTube which is always good to see, and some gory science experiments at the top. Now, with next week being the final episode of SBTV, it's really important, especially if you've not been on before, uh, please, please send your unique content to me here at gsharp at stbeescatholicprimary.co.uk and there are your key stage addresses as well for you to continue to send work to feature on your class pages. Now, when you work behind the scenes and shun the limelight like I do, um, you're often overlooked. I can probably count on, on one hand, near one finger, the number of children who probably know when my birthday is, uh, who, who remember me when they're on holiday, things like that. I, I, I get very little. I don't do it for the presents or gifts. It's not why I'm in this uh, line of work at all. Uh, and I thought it was all over, that, that really. But then Olivia Neal, kindness herself, actually thought about Mr Sharp working hard and thought him probably deserves a little reward and she did some baking with her mum to make these beautiful brownies. Mr Freeman and Mrs Wattle did help themselves to a few when they delivered them last Friday into school uh, but the bulk of them did make it to me Olivia. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to know that someone appreciates me. Now, I'm sure most of you have been keeping an eye on Mr Freeman's homeschool help site on Facebook. And he absolutely puts this television programme to shame because he doesn't broadcast weekly. He commits to doing it every single day. Absolute legend. He's been such an inspiration and really motivated us through this tough period of being in the lockdown. And he's given us lots of ideas and inspiration. And this week he's been running a nature photography competition. And one of the really good things about living in Kimberworth is that you don't have to go too far to get out into nature and be able to take some wonderful photographs. And he's put all those together in a wonderful video, which you can see on his site. 
We also shared that on the 150 page yesterday. Well worth a look because there are some really talented young people taking pictures of the area that we live in. And Mr Freeman picked himself a top five. It was very difficult to pick one overall winner. So he selected five that really stood out. This one, although it looks like the snow, it's actually dancing in the blossom. This one really captures the colours of spring. This is really clever because someone's got down to take this spider's web. It almost looks like a, a, a winding road going off into the distance. That's really very clever. This was certainly one of my favourites. I think it borders on being quite professional. This It shows the death of a, a, a dead tree in the foreground and then all the vibrant life of spring in the background and it's slightly out of focus. That's really, really a clever photograph, that one. But I think if I had to pick a winner, this one would be it. Uh, it's the engine pond and it shows a wonderful view of Kimberworth and you can just see Keppel's column in the background and it stirs up lots of happy memories for me because I spent hours and hours as a child fishing in the engine pond. Brilliant photo, well balanced. I might even try and use that as a background in a minute or two. Let's see if that works. But well done on that for having a go. Some really great photos and well worth having a look. Now we've not seen Paul Gara for weeks and then we see her twice in one show. Uh, really good to see her here. She's been a bit like Lily last week, putting her time to good use and learning how to ride a bike. And Millie Fullwood has been making good use of the fine weather by uh, continuing her swimming lessons in the back garden and taking quad bike lessons from big brother Blake. Can't condone this. I hope this quad bike never leaves the back garden. It tends to frighten dog walkers and, and dogs in particular. I hope these lessons are staying in the garden. You landed it! Go on then. Yeah. Yeah. Go on then. Not on there. Right land. <laughs> Not quite sure what my views are on quad bikes. It stays in the garden, it's all right. Anyway, you'll remember midweek it was red hot. It was nearly 30 degrees. And so these two had a really good idea of how to keep cool. Oh, so refreshing. So last week's challenge was a writing task. It was for five coins and uh, there was the added bonus, if you remember, of for all the entries that came in. I'm going to send them off to a, a national competition run by Aquafresh and someone might just win us at school a uh, good reading voucher worth £500 and yourself a brand new iPad. So it was well worth having a go this week. Um, I think there were nine entries, nine or ten. Uh, they were all really good. I read them all. Really impressed at the standard. Uh, let's have a look at who did enter. There was Evie. She wrote her story, typed it up on Word. Anya's went on a little longer than two minutes and it went across three pages. 
Perfect entry from Miss Elfley Radford and on the correct form. Well done, Daisy. As did Nathan, and he got his on the correct form. And he did some artwork to accompany it as well. I'll send that uh, with your entry, Nathan. It's really good. Daisy used her creative writing ability to come up with this superb little story. And here we can see Paris proudly showing off her work that she wrote in her book. Olivia also had a go. That was a good little story. I did enjoy that one. And again, Khajiit used his creative ability to uh, transfer that into his writing to come up with this superb little story. And then Miss Rhodes put uh, some very entertaining thought into this one and typed it up on Word and sent it through. And it was all about the adventures of her mysterious and mischievous little Willy. Uh, now, Liliana, she also had a go, Khajiit's little sister. Um, she did the artwork, that was brilliant, and she relayed the story to her mum and her mum did confirm in an email that she wrote that down on her behalf. But we got that one through as well and we'll be able to send that in too. Uh, they were all brilliant. I couldn't pick the winner because obviously I knew who'd sent them in. So in, in uh, fairness to the judge, I trimmed all the references off to names and things like that, cropped them down, covered everything up, uh, prepared, and that took a while. <laughs> But eventually I got them ready and I forwarded them to my other sister, my older sister, uh, Julie. And she looked at them all, she read them all on, I think it was Wednesday night. And then on Thursday, she came to a decision and sent me back this wonderful little message. I really enjoyed reading through them all. And um, they were all really good. It was very difficult. I had to read some of them twice. But in the end, the winner for me was number five. So number five, Daisy, well done. Brilliant writing. She did also say off camera how well she admired your writing, the actual standard of the handwriting. Very well done. Brilliant. You're now on the leaderboard, joint second place. And this is really crucial. As you can see there, there are three of you. Chasing down Daisy, who still sits at the top on six coins, but that is all going to change. So well done. I hope you enjoyed doing that. It was a good little task, and I think eventually it'll be nice to see if any of our work does make it into the Aquafresh catalogue of stories that will be read to children. I will be sending those off probably on Monday. Uh, I'll email them off to Aquafresh to enter them. And then fingers crossed, if you've not won the coins today, it's not over as far as this competition is concerned because you could, you might just win yourself an iPad. So to this week's task, it is the final weekly task that we'll be able to set. We'll announce the winner of the Gold Coin League and their prize and everything. We'll announce all them in next week's final show. But I'm going to give you the opportunity this week to race to the top. And it's not the only opportunity. There will be something coming up later in the quiz. But I'm going to give you the chance to race to the top of the leaderboard and probably win it outright. Because this week, as the final sort of weekly challenge special, and because it is the most special occasion, I'm going to make this particular challenge worth 10 gold coins. That's right, you heard it clearly, you heard it right, it's worth 10 gold coins. If you're already on the leaderboard and you win this, you're guaranteed the win. Uh, if you've not featured on the leaderboard yet, uh, there's a chance that you could just steam straight to the top with this big prize. And it is dead simple. On Tuesday, Cooper is 10. It makes him quite old, 70 I think in dog years if you believe all that. Um, so it's his birthday, we need to mark it, we need to celebrate it. It couldn't be easier, you don't need me to babble on with the description here. It is quite simple. Just design a birthday card or poster or something of that nature to celebrate Cooper's 10th birthday. He is of course adorable, he is of course our school mascot. I will put these particular pictures online if you want to use them to copy because you might want to draw, you might want to manipulate some photographs, uh, you might want to sketch something out. Be creative, it will be creativity and cuteness probably that win this. Um, I will let Jacob Wassel be the judge of this particular competition. If it weren't for Jacob uh, and choosing Cooper out of the litter for them to keep, uh, because they did have Cooper's mum, then Cooper would never have been involved in our family. People think he is my dog and he's not. He's, he's the Wassell's dog. 
but he just loves me more than anybody. So we'll share those pictures. You can have a look at them. You can come up with your own weird and wonderful way of celebrating Cooper's birthday. Ideally, just one picture that you can share that could go on the front of a birthday card or a poster or whatever. Uh, send them in. The winner will get 10 gold coins. Now you'll remember, I was getting very concerned that the, this bookshelf was uh, empty and no one was perhaps working on a book, but that's just not the case. I've been worrying unnecessarily. I had the good fortune to receive this message from Mr. Freeman about his book and he very kindly shared the front cover and here it is. And also uh, I had the pleasure of bumping into Charlie Hater in the week he was out on a walk with his family and he was telling me he's written seven chapters of his book so there uh, there's lots of activity taking place i shouldn't have worried in that way i knew that we would have at least something for our digital library uh, so well done keep working on them if you've not started it yet maybe maybe make a start it'll be great to get some of these especially on the new ipads We'll be able to read your work and share it across the whole school community so that's really good uh, and on that we we had a, a an email from luke athy's mum and he's been compiling this book about football facts and he's been sort of getting the pictures and sticking them in and writing a little bit of information about it that's exactly the type of thing that we need we can turn that into a digital book we can uh, type that in get the pictures in and it will be sensational so there's another book on there. Luke, save all that. Bring it into school when we can. And uh, we've got another digital book there. Well done. Now, news about Whitby. This is probably filtered through to you already. And it's very important if you are currently in year five. Uh, as you know, Whitby this year is off. We are not going. Uh, the September trip has been cancelled. Well, not cancelled. It's been postponed. And I think, I honestly think... Um, you will enjoy all the more because we're going to go after your sats hopefully if it's a normal enough academic year starting in september uh we'll we'll build up to doing sats in year six when that's done we'll then go to whitby i think there was a slight problem i think mrs wassell booked it in the holiday time which we wouldn't be doing would we but even the greatest make mistakes as you know uh, so around about a year from now, I'm thinking about it, think of the good weather that we've been enjoying and uh, the fact it stays light, well, about half nine, ten o'clock at night, we'll be able to get out on the beach. I know there's great fun. I think it was Harriet that was uh, moon bathing, if you can call it that, or we've had some great games of football on the beach in the dark, but you'll experience it slightly differently because we'll get longer nights and maybe able to do more that we have never done before in the past so Whitby it's happening it's just a little bit later it's about a year from now and in a way although it's great to kick start the year with that uh, adventure we've got something to look forward to for a lot longer and uh, might make it all the more special I'm sure it will Not much, by the way, of art received this week. Uh, if you were like me, my internet was down for two days, Monday and Tuesday, I think it was. Uh, so I wasn't able to, to, to do a great deal in terms of working on this. Uh, hopefully that's not been a problem for you this week. I think it affected Virgin Media and Sky, maybe. So I don't know. If you've had a problem in getting things through, nothing we can do about that. Maybe double up and send for next week for the final, for the final show. But what we have received, this from Tamara, brilliant work. She's decided to draw her family, really creative. Lots of use of amazing colour, really well done. And then, of course, uh, I think this came through twice, so it didn't feature earlier when Mrs Kane's slides were up, because Daisy's mum sent me this separately. Uh, this from Daisy, she'd been working on dark colours this week, and she's created these two really stunning images of space. So there's been a few birthdays last week believe it or not mrs green was 39 i know she'd look a lot older and she won't appreciate me saying that uh, but she is just 39 
Uh, many happy returns, Mrs. Green. I hope you had a wonderful day. I'm sure you did. I'm sure Mason brought you breakfast in bed and, and looked after you all day and then and you celebrated. I'm sure your little old pal, the much older Mrs. Eileen Hazelhurst, probably brought you around some uh, drink to celebrate in the evening, maybe at a social distance. I hope you had a great day. I'm sure, I'm sure that you did. And on Wednesday of next week, day after Cooper's birthday, our Mrs. Howitt turns 40 something i would guess not quite sure early 40s looks well into her 30s but she is actually in her 40s now i know that mrs howitt's got a uh, very i'm not going to let too much out the bag here but i did bump into owen finn and mr howitt the other day they were out uh, shopping and creating all these sorts of special surprises ready for the big day you go into love it they've put loads of effort into it um, go with the flow of the day, Mrs. Howitt, and enjoy it. I'm sure that you will. They've really worked hard for you. And of course, the birthday celebration started slightly early for Mrs. Howitt in school. Uh, Mrs. McDowell wanted to mark the occasion, Mrs. Howitt's birthday, with a special little gift, as she always likes to do. So kind and so considerate are Mrs. McDowell. And then one special mention for a young lady who turned 18 in the week my beautiful adorable niece heather celebrated her big birthday ever so slightly insane as you can see with her shopping trip to being q before the lockdown but stunningly beautiful and an amazing cake made by connor's mum and although it probably wasn't the birthday she had planned like so many other people we did the best that we could and we certainly gave her a day that she will never forget and finally, we like a little bit of follow up to uh, any parties that have taken place. And here you can see Ethan, he had his special 11th quarantine party. And as the banner quite clearly states there, none of you are invited. <laughs> and that's not by choice, that's because he had to. But I hope you had a great day, Ethan. Well done. Love the sign. You should save that forever. <laughs>
Here we go with wheels on the foot if you'd like to join in and do some actions. Are you ready, girls? Yeah. The wheels on the fence go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all day long. The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish. Brilliant. How could your singing ever make us cry all day long? Fabulous. What a. I can't, I'm, I'm lost for words. It was brilliant. Probably one of my highlights of the entire series of Staff Challenge. Uh, brilliant. Well done. I am so super proud of you both. Thank you. Looks like I've just accidentally triggered my watch and all that was being dictated for a Siri search unnecessarily. Okay, so who's next? Who's going to be in the final show? to do the final staff challenge. Well, of course, with that announcement from earlier in the week, we have a brand new member of staff who can now join in this particular game. And it's fortunate, let me just read this. It's fortunate because the two that are going to be involved are Mrs. Hart and Mr. Beaumont. And this comes about as a result of a, um, a challenge that was set that I've adapted ever so slightly. I think, I think it's a little bit too difficult. But we're going to throw it your way and see if it can be done. Because not only are you doing this for your own pride and to be part of the St. Bede's TV staff challenge, but you're also representing your football clubs. Because I'm sure you know, children, the uh, both sides of Sheffield are represented with these two. There you go. Um, Mrs. Hart, Trueblade, and for his sins, Mr. Vermont, is an owl. And so the task is this, and I don't think school's open next week, so we'll have to agree some rules, but in a, in a very, very small nutshell, the task is quite simple. All you have to do is recall from memory the scores from the Premier League for your team in order. So it was suggested for Mrs. Hart this, and it's, I thought this is good, but we could turn this into a race. So I'll leave it up to you whether you go from the most recent when the season paused and go back all the way back to like last August, is it? Or whether you start there and, and work your way up to where the season stopped. And all you've got to do is say like, match, I don't know, Manchester United, three all draw, Arsenal, two one win. But, but they've got to be in order. If it were in school, I could get Mr Booth to adjudicate and make sure there's no cheating going on, but I don't think it's going to be possible. So we will rely on you to be honest. Don't have any visual prompts. Maybe when you record this, say straight at the camera, please do it honestly. We will rely on your integrity. I think it's quite hard. I'm guessing you're going to be doing about 25 to 30 matches that you've got to recall. If you are a true fan, that shouldn't be a problem and you should be able to just rattle those scores off. Um, have a go. If you can't do all 30, just stop when you hit a point where your memory goes blank or whatever. Um, however, if you do get all the way through the season, uh, we'll find out who does it in the quickest time. That will determine the winner. So you're representing your club, you're doing this for St Bede's TV. All the scores from this season, just for the Premier League matches. Oh, well, of course, not Premier League for Sheffield Wednesday. They're not quite that good, are they, yet? 
uh, all the matches you've played in your league, no European things or, or other tournaments or whatever, just the league. Hope that's clear. We'll expect those videos in. Please do it honestly. Stare at the camera constantly to give your answer. Uh, good luck with it. I think it's quite tough, but I'm sure you'll give it a go. Just a reminder, please, please stay safe out there. Don't be pestering your parents to be going on apps that you know you shouldn't be going on because they are for older children or young adults even. Um, school will be slowly starting to get back together and there will be the opportunity for greater points of contact if you need it. But for now, remember, there are still lots of ways of getting in touch with school. Most easy access is online where you can use these quick links to other agencies too. Just well worth a, a look this. Computer gaming and the gaming industry might not be of any interest to you, but there is a little 10 minute clip that I think you would find fascinating, even if you're not into computer games. Because when I first got my computer, the family computer that we got in the early 1980s, it's, it was a Commodore 64. And unlike today where you just click on your iPad and you click on the icon and the game loads up, with a Commodore 64, the games used to come on a cassette, believe it or not. And you used to have to plug the cassette into a separate cassette drive and start it off playing that way. It could take half an hour for it to load and then it would fail sometimes and you had to redo the whole thing again. Very, very early days of computing. They were marvellous days. You used to spend hours and hours and hours coding just to get a very simple hot air balloon to travel up the screen. They were, they were marvellous days and we'd enjoy many a simple hour playing Panic 64 or some very other basic game that was around at the time. Of course, you'll no doubt be very well aware, and I think it might have just been pushed on a few months, but you'll be aware that there is a brand new console war about to erupt into the gaming world because there is the brand new Xbox virtually ready and then there is the new PlayStation 5. And both of these consoles have been tested and used, and quite honestly, they're ready to display some software that has simply never been seen before. So the guys who make uh, Fortnite, you'll know them, Epic, they, they've um, they released, or they work partner with, with Unreal Engine, and they've released a little preview video of just some of the capability of the new PlayStation 5 and the sort of software that they've developed that it can run. And the clip's called Unreal Engine 5 Reveal Next Generation Real-Time Demo Running on PlayStation 5. And you can look that up on YouTube. It was only released within the week and it's already had about 12 million views. Such is the anticipation of what's coming there. And I'm not going to too much detail because you can watch the clip if, if it's of interest to you, but they've developed two really significant brand new aspects for software, for uh, particularly for the gaming industry. It's called Lumin, and that's all to do with how, how the light bounces around on the uh, game. And then there is another aspect called Nanai. <laughs> and you really get a sense of that when you watch the little clip through and you see the demo, because they can directly use film quality assets to bring straight into the engine. So it, it basically produces art that just works. Such dynamic GI for more realistic animation. And the audio is absolutely sensational. But where when I think back to those original games that I used to play, and for many years the way that the gaming industry was, it was like sort of just pixels on a screen. Whereas now those rocks that you can see, they're made up of like geometric shapes, mainly triangles. And there could be a million triangles in, in just one rock. But then that means that can move completely independently from everything else in the scene the way that the light reacts to it the sound that it generates the fact that you might slip on it as, a, as your character could you know playing the game could slip it really is just you know even if you're not into gaming it's well worth a look just to see what these fantastic people are able to create uh, it will drive that industry massively in in that direction always goes to show that you're going to have to keep up with the hardware to be able to play this amazing software. It's always software that drives 
these uh, capabilities for more powerful machines on. But if you've got a spare 10 minutes, it's well worth a look. Some of the terminology is a little bit tricky to understand if, you, if you're new to this world, but you generally you get the idea. And the main reason I want you to watch it is because this industry is massive and it's so underpopulated, a little bit like the engineering world. Um, I know it's all a bit crazy at the moment and things are a bit relaxed, but this industry is crying out for talented mathematicians, graphic designers and artists, really good natural artists and skilled animators. And of course, the thing that they really need is 21st century coders to really bring this to life. Their jobs that, that will be in high demand. And I know we have a few early glimpses at primary school, but this might just inspire you to take that that little bit further. Don't fail me now. to see what's next. And then equally sensational is the uh, efforts put in by our colleagues in Foundation and they're reading on camera some stories. We're now up to three or four, I think we've got. Uh, the very latest is The Hungry Caterpillar with Miss Coleman. Um, superb. This is Von Clarkson one. And so has Mrs. Thompson. Mrs. Thompson even gets dressed up into character. In order to view those, all you have to do is go to the school website and go to the class pages and, and then either Red Unit or Class 1 and you'll see the links to the stories there. Really, really good. Uh, very enjoyable. And thank you to the staff down there who are doing that to keep the younger ones entertained. <music> Okay, so it's quiz time and hopefully you've got your pen and paper ready. Uh, you'll need that in a minute, but we need to cover off the answers from last time and find out who won the gold coins. So if you remember, for question one, the answer was Brasilia for the capital of Brazil. The film was Doolittle. Babu Frick was the character from Star Wars. For question four, in the name Nintendo DS, the DS stands for dual screen. Bram Stoker wrote Dracula for question five. Kuala Lumpur is where you would find the Patronus Towers for question six. It was, of course, Mrs. Beatty for question seven. Steven Universe was the character in question eight. The would-be king of the world in his younger days was, of course, Boris Johnson. And what comes once in a minute, twice in a moment, but never in a thousand years. And that's the letter M. Now, quite a few of you had a go last week, but the first one through was Olivia Neal, my favourite little pastry chef. But unfortunately, she made that classic quizzing mistake for question one. Unfortunately, it's not Rio, the capital of Brazil. And that came in just before 11 o'clock. At 18 minutes past 11, we then got Miss Barraclough. It was the Star Wars question that caught out Miss Barraclough there. But then at 29 minutes past 11, Nathan from Class 6 sent his email through and he got absolutely every single one correct. So the two gold coins go to Nathan. Well done to you, sir. Really good. You find yourself on the leaderboard. You just pushed Archie down there. Um, there were a few others who had a go. Let's have a look. They were just a little bit later, but the first through was Daisy and she got them all right, but you were just beaten on time. And then Saturday morning, Luke, Athy had a go. So you were well beaten on time and there was a blank. And remember, it was always worth having a guess because you've got to get them all right to win the gold coin. So uh, well done for having a go. Now this week, it's going to be for a record, as this is the last quiz, because we've got to announce the uh, results and the winners next week in the final show. So as this is the last ever quiz, it's going to be worth 10 gold coins. 10. There are, we, we've never given as many gold coins away. We will find out a winner uh, who's going to be at the top of the leaderboard. If you think whose birthday is coming up, a certain school mascot's birthday is coming up this week, the theme of the weekly task you may find that might help you with these answers. Hopefully you've got your pen 
and your paper ready. This is all about speed. The answers are very, very easy. You will be able to work out the common thread that runs through them all. This is whoever can get them all right and get them in the fastest. Someone will win 10 coins and it will probably be in this first hour. Here we go, if we're ready, eyes down, look in. Question one, what is the name of this former toy shop in Rotherham? Question two, who is this legendary aging rock star? Question three, what name is given to someone who makes barrels? Question four, who is this Hollywood actor in his much younger days? Question five, specifically, this is known as a mini what? Question six, what is the name of this young defender who was signed by Rotherham United last year? Question seven, who is this legendary comedian and magician? Question eight, this animated character made it into a series of PlayStation games. His name is Sly what? Question nine, famous for his northern roots, often given the nickname the punk poet, who is this? And question 10, according to the dog people, as powered by Rover.com, what was the seventh most popular name for a male dog in 2019? I'm sure you've got the theme. I'm sure you're already quickly writing these down. It is a case of who can get these answers in the quickest. Send them in to me, gsharp at stbscatholicprimary.co.uk. First one through, 10 coins. It could win you the league overall. Fingers crossed this is all about speed. And don't give up hope. It's always worth having a go. Someone may have got it wrong. You might need the help of an adult or the internet for uh, the poet one. I think that's the only real tricky one in there. All the rest, I'm sure you can work out. You've got the theme already. Good luck. First one through. So that's about it, more or less, for the penultimate show. Apart from this little bit of bad news, I, I didn't, this caught me out. I didn't even know anything about this. It's, as a school, we're going to be saying goodbye to Leighton. He is moving house and therefore has to move school. I believe he's moving across Rotherham. I know a few people, I think, are putting a little video together to say goodbye to you, Leighton, but I will use this opportunity to say goodbye. Good luck at your new school. St. Bede won't quite be the same. We'll really miss you. Um, I've enjoyed working with you. You've been uh, very skilled in the IT suite with all that you've been able to do. Uh, so good luck at your new school. And go on, I'm sure you'll make lots of new friends and you'll settle in straight away. But good luck. And then, of course, the other hot topic at the moment is the potential for school to reopen. At this moment in time, it is Thursday for me recording this. Uh, you'll be watching this on Friday, Friday morning, probably. Uh, and the world could be a very different place by then. Certainly by the 8th, when we're scheduled to be going back to school for years uh, six, I think on that very first day, I know Mrs. Wassell has sent a letter to your parents and putting everyone in the picture, but we're, we're going to invite year six back first and then year one and then foundation. And that will all start after our natural break after the half term holiday. But, like anything else, this is all about confidence. We've had some rather strange questions, uh, some very sensible ones, but then some, some really quite random ones as well. We cannot issue, as a school, any firm guarantee. If you are wanting a completely risk-free environment, the only thing you can do is stay at home, because there is an element of risk coming into school. We were going to do the best that we can. There is no guarantee that we will be able to keep everyone safe. And therefore that is a family decision that you have to make. How confident are you about coming back to school? Are you desperate to see your friends and get back into school life, even though it won't be the same? Or do you feel that you need to stay at home and be with your family or be around the protection of your home? There will be no fines for not attending school. These aren't normal times. This is very much a personal decision. Um, I'm a little bit nervy about going back. I will be back from the 8th. And as will most of the staff, we won't all be back for, there are lots of reasons why certain people can't come back. Um, I know initially some people have said that they don't wish to come back. Probably you've already made the decision that you'll be going back to school and starting all your schooling in September. And that's fine. Then we respect that completely. 
Um, it's going to be peculiar, it's going to be odd, it's going to be uneasy. Things will be very different, I'm sure. If we have to wear masks, I want one like this, a nice Star Wars one. Um, I think we'll probably have to wash, compulsory wash hands six or seven times a day. Uh, we might have to eat at different times. Things will be very staggered. It'll be very, very peculiar. It won't be like what we know, but we do need to try and get things back to normal. If you are concerned, and I know many people are, this is a very serious issue. Um, it's worth perhaps keeping an eye on the French system. They went back to school uh, in exactly the same way with the same year groups. They went back to school uh, a couple of weeks before we did and they've they've had issues. They've had uh, health concerns, they've had health knock-on effects and things like that. Um, it's worth keeping an, an eye on that model there because we will be very similar to that approach. It's, it's an unusual time. I think we're all desperate to get back to normal life but that may never happen. We may have to learn to live with this virus and work around it. We can be sensible, we can be alert to stay safe, but if you want a guarantee, then probably coming back to school won't give you that guarantee. Sit down, talk about it as a family, be happy with the decision that you make, uh, stay safe, look out for each other, and we'll just take it from there. It could all change. We may have to issue certain guidance. This is happening and this we're recording this here and now. It could be a totally different picture in a week's time. I think people are getting fed up and we're already pushing the rules to the very limit and that could cause a problem in terms of spreading this virus. So just keep an eye on the news, keep an eye on the communications from school from Mrs Wassell. We'll keep you updated on here. But for now, the plan is that we're going back on the 8th for year six and we'll gradually get more and more people back that feel confident to do so. So we're gonna have to pack all this away, all the equipment's gonna go back to school because we'll need it there. So next week really is the last St. Bede TV scheduled to be, it could change, but it's scheduled to be the last one. Let's make it the biggest and the best yet. There will be a permanent record of everything that we've ever done during this lockdown period. They'll be there forever and in years to come, we can look back and hopefully smile and have some wonderful memories of the time that we had during lockdown uh, through these episodes of St. Beats TV. Thank you for contributing. If you've not seen your pal, you've not seen your mate or whatever, encourage them to send something in for this last one. Think about those designs for Cooper. Hopefully you've already sent your quiz answers in. It's an easy theme this week. Take care. We'll see you for the last one next week.